Jesus' presence. Hallelujah. And we thank you and we praise God because we brought him in with us because he is down on the inside. We don't have to be pumped. We don't have to be proud because God is God. Hallelujah. He is, he is a king and deserves to be praised. Hallelujah. We praise and we thank God this morning how he has brought us safely once again up and down the dangerous highways. Hallelujah. No hurt, harm, or danger come upon us. Hallelujah. That is a blessing in itself. We walked in here of our own accord, did not have to be wheeled in, pushed in. Hallelujah. Use and activity of our limbs. Hallelujah. We use these phrases as cliche, but I thank him that I am clothed and in my right mind. Hallelujah. Because not everyone can say that in the name of Jesus. God has been gracious. He has been merciful. He has been kind. He is a good God. Hallelujah. He has done more than I ever, ever expected. Hallelujah. Exceedingly, abundantly, above all I can even ask or think. So just that alone, hallelujah. If he never does anything else, hallelujah. We have enough to glorify him for. Enough to praise him for. Hallelujah. We thank and we praise God for being that kind of God unto us. It's not a song. He is a way maker. Hallelujah. He is a healer because I know it for myself. No one has to tell me about it. I don't have to read about it in a book. I know him as a healer. I know him as, as a way maker. I know him as a heavy load carer. I know him as a burden bearer. Hallelujah. I know him as the doctor in the sick room. Hallelujah. That's the kind of God I serve. Hallelujah. This hallelujah is not form or fashion to me. This is my life. Hallelujah. And you'll find me doing this as long as the Lord says so until he comes for me. Hallelujah. I praise and I thank God for you on this morning who counted that robbery to give God glory and praise. So if you're here, you might as well give him glory. You might as well give him praise. Hallelujah. It's truly he is worthy. Hallelujah. Scripture lesson this morning, Psalm 28. Hallelujah. Unto thee will I cry, O Lord, my rock, be not silent to me. Lest thou be silent to me, I become like them that go down into the pit. Hear the voice of my supplications when I cry unto thee, when I lift up my hands toward the holy oracle. Draw me not away with the wicked and with the workers of iniquity, which speak peace to their neighbors but mischief in their hearts. Give them according to their deeds and according to the wickedness of their endeavors. Give them after the work of their hands. Render to them their desert, because they regard not the works of the Lord, nor the operation of his hands. He shall destroy them and not build them up. Blessed be the Lord, because he hath heard the voice of my supplications. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusteth in him, and I am helped. Therefore my heart greatly rejoices, and with my song will I praise him. The Lord is their strength, and he is the saving strength of his anointed. Hallelujah. Save thy people and bless thine inheritance. Feed them also and lift them up forever. The word of the Lord is already blessed. God's word for God's people. Praise the Lord, everybody. As we stand to our feet, just bow our heads as we go before the throne of grace on today. Lord, I thank you for the opportunity to be in your house again. I thank you for these your people that you've made, Lord God, by your hand. You've made them for your glory. And so that they can learn how much you love them and how much you care about them. And how, Lord God, you are so active in their daily activity in their life. Oh God, it doesn't change because we don't understand who you are. It doesn't change who, Lord God, you being God because of how we feel. But we're so glad that while we were yet in our sins, it was Christ that died for the ungodly. Thank you because you came into a world 
They didn't want to accept you. They didn't want to honor you. They didn't want to praise you. But you loved us so much that while we were yet in our sins, you died for the ungodly. And you made a way for us to get to know you as our King, as our Lord, as our Savior, and as our God. As we unify ourselves together in this place, we ask you to fill this house, oh God, with your presence. Fill it with your spirit so that when anyone walks in the door, they could feel the anointing and the power and the presence of God. We love you and we praise you because you first loved us. Oh God, because you made a way for us. You healed us and you delivered us. And oh God, you elevated us and lifted us out of very low place. Oh God, and we just want to say thank you, Jesus. Thank you for our family members. Thank you for our wives and our children and these women that have husbands. Thank you for how you have blessed them and kept them. And we ask you to look at our families this hour and say, Lord God, bring someone out of darkness into your marvelous light. Oh, only you can do this thing and we give you glory in this house. In the name of Jesus, teach us how to walk upright, how to live right, how to love one another, how to treat one another with kindness and compassion. Let the caring nature of God be found in our midst. Oh God, give us your wisdom. Give us your knowledge and your understanding. Oh God, that we may know how to operate in a way, Lord Jesus, that will bless you and that will touch the lives of those that are broken, those that are hurting, those that are wounded. Oh God, those that are going through right now and can't see a way out. Oh Jesus, let the light of Christ shine through us as we are the ambassadors of Christ in this earth and use us as vessels of honor, we pray, and we'll be careful to give you the glory and the honor for the working of your power. Somebody say both now and forever. In the name of Jesus, it is our prayer. Amen. And amen. Come on, clap your hands and praise the right now. In the name of Jesus, as our praise team comes in this hour, let's receive them with a hearty amen. Praise the Lord.
to you. Lord, I praise you. You've been so good. Lord, no matter how I try to express how good you've been, it's never sufficient. No matter what I say, it's never enough. Because you've been so good to me. I thank God for you all that are in the house. Those that are listening by way of online, the internet, and those that will come here after. We'll watch it at a later date. I thank God for you. Your dedication to the hearing the word of God. How can they hear except there be a preacher? And how can he preach except he be sent? So it's our desire to always be in the plan and in the will of God. Never to operate by our own will or our own desire. But to please God in everything that we say and do. We read this passage of scripture for our Friday morning prayer at six o'clock. For those of you that have joined us, many of you are faithful and dedicated to prayer. And I thank God for you because we need to keep an open line of communication with heaven. We need to pray for our loved ones, our children, those that don't even know Christ, don't even know that they need him. We need to pray for those that don't like us, that despitefully use us, because they need Christ too. They need salvation. So it should be our prayer that the Lord will save them. I don't know about you, but I don't really want to see anybody be lost in their sin. The Lord had made a way for us to escape the wrath that is to come. Well, I wish such a thing upon anyone. It's my desire that all men, just like Christ, should be saved. And that all should come to repentance. As we stand for the reading of God's word, those of you that were with me know we were in the 17th chapter of Genesis with the book of the beginning. In the 17th chapter, it reads in this manner. It says, And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. I will make my covenant between me and thee and will multiply thee exceedingly. And Abram fell on his face and God talked with him saying, As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee and thou shalt be a father of many nations. Neither shall thy name any more be called Abram, but thy name shall be Abraham for a father of many nations have I made thee. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee, in their generations for an everlasting covenant, to be a God unto them, and to be thy seed, and to thy seed after thee. And I will give unto thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger, all the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. And I will be their God. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant, therefore, thou and thy seed after thee in their generation. And I want to stop right there. As we bow our heads, together. Lord, today we thank you for the word that have been read into our midst. 
We thank you because we know that the word has been given unto us as a lamp unto our feet and as a light unto our path. So Lord, we ask you to allow your word to take root in our hearts and our minds, to lead us and to guide us in the way that you'd have us to go. Let your spirit now work freely in the house. And everything that's not like you, every thought, every imagination, every act, let it be brought to naught. Oh God, let every satanic power be bound. Oh God, and let the power of God move in this place. So that someone will, but God say, what must I do to be saved and delivered from the shackles of sin? And then Lord God, do it for your glory. Set them free that your name may be exalted in this place. Lord God in the earth. And we will ever praise you for this in advance. In Jesus name. Amen. And amen. If I were to take a thought today. I thought it would be God's plan. Is the best plan. God's plan is the best plan. When I look into this chapter, I see a man who has lived a pretty full life. Abram is now right at 90 years old and nine, which is 99 years of age. And God made a promise to him that I'm going to give you a seed. I'm going to give you an heir. And that through this heir, this male child, the kindred of the earth, is going to be blessed. Abram had received this promise from the Lord while dwelling in the land with his father and his family members. So he was in a place of comfort, no doubt a place of protection. A place where he didn't have to worry about the people around him because he had grown up in this area. And so he knew what to expect from those around him. Sometimes you have people around you that you can depend on and count on because you know they're stable. Time has proved this through their actions, their behavior. The processes and the procedures and things that they have learned and are taken into their uh, and added to their lifestyle. And you can see that they're producing good fruit. And so you become comfortable with them in your life because you don't have to worry about them doing you harm or bringing damage to you or those around you. But then sometimes you have people around you that you consider your crazy uncle. None of y'all have any of those. You're crazy, aunt. Cousins. They may not really care for you as much. But you learn how to deal with it because they are family. And so here, Abram had grown up in a place where he was no doubt surrounded by family. But here comes the Lord and makes a promise unto Abram and says, I want you to get out of your father's house and I want you to go to a country that I will afterward show you. I want you to leave your kindred, your family members. And I'm going to show you this land once you arrive. I'm not going to show it to you in advance. I'm not going to give you the special details on what to expect. But I want you to operate in faith. I want you to trust me. I need you to know that I'm God and I don't fail. I need you to know that I don't make mistakes. I need you to know that I'm going to be with you even unto the ends of the world. I need you to trust me that, that I'm going to be your shield and your buckler. That I'm going to be the protector. The giver of life. So when I send you, I want you to know that I'm not just sending you without a promise. I'm going to promise you, first of all, that I'm going to make a great nation out of thee. So I'm going to bring something out of you that you can't even see right now. 
I'm going to produce something in your midst that almost seems impossible because I'm telling you to leave everything that you have. And Abram was around the age of 75 years old when God made this promise unto him. So you can imagine, I'm already well in my years. I'm already advanced as far as my time. And so most people have been living around maybe 120 at the most still in this time. And so he says, well, you know, I may have some years to produce a seed. So I'm going to operate on what you have said. So Abram departs. He departs. He leaves his family. He leaves his father's house. And he takes his wife and he goes into a land Believing that God is going to raise up a nation from his own loins. But when he gets out there, he begins to encounter some problems and some struggles. Anybody ever launched out on what God told you and when you got out there, you start having some challenges and you start wondering in yourself, did God really tell me to do this thing? Did God really ordained for me or, 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 or call me out from all of these other things so that I could do this work and this specific work for him. I don't feel qualified. I don't feel like I've been trained well enough. I don't feel like I have the right credentials or I don't have the right uh, title and I haven't earned the title even if I've been given the title. I've not earned the right to be considered the servant of the Most High. But I want you to know that God calls him out for a purpose. What you have to understand is when Abraham left, he had no plan. Most of us want to have a plan in life. Most of you are probably drawn out what you want to accomplish or what you want to see transpire. In your life. Most of you probably said I want to have a new home. Some of you have probably said by the time I reach a certain age. I want to make sure that I have a BMW or a Mercedes Benz. Some of you may say I wanted a Jag. Some may say I want a Bentley. But these are goals that you have set for yourself. Some people may say, I want to have my PhD. I want to be able to excel in education. Some may say, by this time, I'd like to own my own business. That I'd like to be an entrepreneur. So, uh, entrepreneur. Help us, hallelujah. Because you don't want to be the first. But you want to make sure that you are progressing in your life. And this is what you are focused on, progress. And so you have a goal, you have an aim. You've arranged things in your life so that you can be successful. But how many know that you have to learn how to be patient in some things? Things don't always come in rapid succession. Sometimes you have to learn how to put off instant gratification so that you can look at the long-term effects of what you're doing now and so that you can reap when the right time comes. The Bible says you will reap if you faint not. So many times we are so quick to give up. But it takes time. And when the right season comes, the Lord will allow you to bear the fruit. And so here, Abram leaves. He takes his wife, Sarai. And they go on this journey and they find themselves in a foreign land, in a strange place. And now, he's concerned about how things are going to end up. 
I've got people around me and I have no one. I have no army. I have no one to protect me. I'm out of here by myself. And I find myself in Egypt. I find myself in all of these other locations where I have no one around me. I have my servants. Now, no, he didn't leave without some help. How many of y'all know God never put you out there without some help? Oh, yes. He had some help. But the most important thing is he needed to still learn how to trust in the Lord. Because the vision he had been given, the promise he had been given did not come from man. But it came from God. So the Bible declares that he went out and he found himself in the land of Canaan. And there was all sorts of people hanging out in the land. As you grow and as you walk through life, you're going to encounter many different types of people. And a lot of those people may not mean you well. They may not fit into your practices that you've learned from your youth and your standards of the way you should live. They may be uniquely different. The things that they do may be strange to you. But you have to learn how to dwell with all men. Here Abram found himself in a strange place. But I want you to know that God never left him. Even when he had to go to war, God was still with him. Still protected him, still watched over him. And now that he has lived through all of these battles, all of these struggles, all of these problems, the Bible says now the Lord comes back unto Abraham again and he renews this promise. At 99 years old, when his body is now weak and his body is worn and his body is slightly broken down and he can feel the weight of the years resting upon him. And now the Lord says, Abram, I want you to be thou perfect. Lord, you know that I failed you at different points in my life. You know that I messed up at different points in my life. You know that I tried to manipulate Amen. The things around me to work in my favor. And though they have not yet, Lord, you are speaking unto me, promising me that you have made a covenant with me. I've made an agreement with you. This is what God is saying. I've come into an agreement with you in spite of your behavior, in spite of your actions, in spite of your thought process, in spite of the fact that you failed me. I'm still in covenant relationship with you because I love you and because I'm going to show the world that I'm still God in the midst of your situation, in the midst of your trouble, in the midst of your crisis. I still want to show the world that I'm God in you. Somebody tell me about it. You have to remember God does not change because of us. God does not change because of the problems that you're dealing with. He still remains consistent as God. God says, I'm the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so the Lord comes to Abram and he begins to talk to him. And he says, I made this covenant with you and I'm still going to multiply thee exceedingly. Oh God, you mean I'm old? I'm at the point of where I should be dying and my members are weak and they're frail. And yet you are telling me that you're going to multiply me greatly. And the Lord says, listen, I want you to remember that I'm God Almighty. Amen. I want you to remember that I'm El. I'm the strong one. I want you to remember amen, that I'm El Shaddai. And that I want you to remember amen, that I'm the nurturer. That I'm the provider. Amen. That I'm the one that meets your needs. I'm the God that can change 
the dynamics that you're in in your environment. I'm the God, amen, that is the giver of life and of strength. I'm the God that is the satisfier. I have everything in my hand. In other words, the enemy may fight, but he can't pluck you out of my hand. Somebody need to tell him hallelujah. I want you to remember who I am, Abram. I want you to know that I am the life-giving source. Amen. I'm the very breath that you breathe. Amen. I'm the very strength that gets you up in the morning. I'm the one that bless you when you lay down at night. I'm the one that keeps the enemy, amen, from coming in your house and robbing you and stealing and killing you. I'm the God that is your potential. And so, Abram, I want you to know, amen, that I'm going to give you an offspring. I know you feel like you're dried up. I know you feel like your wife, who is 90 years old, and then can no longer produce a child in a body. But I want you to know what I made. I can make it over again. Somebody need to tell the Lord, Lord, make me over again. I want you to make me a man that son, a man that's on fire. I want you to make me that daughter, a man that's on fire, burning with the Holy Ghost. I want you to turn a man this thing around and show me your power. I want to feel your presence again. I want to feel a man your anointing again. Do it, Jesus. I wonder if there's anybody in here that wanted to do it again in your life. Uh, tell him hallelujah. Oh yes. Abram's there and he's feeling his weakness. He's feeling his brokenness. He's feeling being aged and worn and tired. And Lord now after all of this amen these battles that I fought amen after all of this amen where I've been working and struggling amen my wife amen was amen just absolutely gorgeous and I had to fight to keep her out of the hands of other men and now we're both weary and tired amen praise the Lord our skin is showing the wear and the tear amen and our members are saying it's over and what are you thinking and now you're gonna come in the midst and blow life on me and say live Lord I need a miracle right about now. And the Lord says, Abram, I'm not going to leave you the same. I know I've given you the name as Abram, as exalted father. Amen. But I'm going to change your name. I'm going to give you a new name because I'm going to do a new thing in your life. I'm going to change your name to Abraham. Not only are you going to be exalted? But you're going to be a father of many nations. Don't be satisfied. And then with just a little. Trust God. And he's about and then to multiply. And then what's in your life. And then he'll take you. And he may break you. And when he breaks you. Now he can give you what he desires. Somebody says yes. Because now he can give amen, the example of your life amen, to many others. And when they see it, amen, they'll say yes. If God did it for them, he can do it for me. If God brought them out of that situation, he can bring me out. If God brought them out of poverty, and I'm not just talking about financial poverty, but I'm talking about mental bankruptcy. I'm talking about mental health where your mind's almost gone and the Lord brought you back from losing your mind. Amen. He delivered you from your depression and your anxiety and your frustration and your fear and your doubt. God brought you out. I don't know about you, but I
Let me tell you, the promise wasn't only unto Abram. Not only did God change his name and work out the, the situation in Abram's life and made him Abraham now because you see there's a transition in this chapter from Abram to Abraham. But if you look a little further, Sarai also had a transition in her life. And so that which was dead in Sarah, and then God quickened it by his power divine. And so some things that you thought you lost, you need to stop crying over that mess. And you need to look up and live. And then you need to look up and give God glory. Because women of God, I said God is not forgotten. Amen. What he promised unto you. They always talking about Abraham. But what about Sarah? Amen. That is now. Amen. The mother of princes. Amen. The mother of nations. Amen. The mother who got changed from being barren. Amen. To a woman now. Amen. That produces seed at night. Somebody tell him hallelujah. It wasn't my plan. But it was God's plan. It was God's plan to wait this long to show himself. But it was the best plan. Because if I would have did it in my own strength, I would have thought it was me. If I would have did it in my own time, I would have pretty much determined that it was my strategy, amen, that caused me to win, amen. But when God allowed me to go through some stuff, then I had to look at myself differently because I understood, amen, my weakness and my frailty and those things that hindered me, amen, in my own body and in my own thoughts, amen, from getting to the next level. Amen. But once God allowed me to go through the test, once God allowed me to go through the fire, amen. Once God allowed me to go through the water and it didn't overtake me, I had a different perspective on God. Amen. I perceived, amen, that it was His strength, amen, that it was His power, amen, that it was His presence that brought me where I am today. And because of this, I give Him praise. Amen. Because of this. This, I can give him thanks. Amen. Because of this, I don't have to lean to my own understanding. But in all of my ways, I can acknowledge him. And he will direct my path. It wasn't my plan. But God's plan is the best plan. God's way is the best way. I didn't want my children to have to suffer like that. Sometimes they got to suffer some things to grow in knowledge, to grow in wisdom, and to get understanding. Sometimes that's the process. And no matter how hard you try to stop it, all you can do is pray. Sometimes you call up your son and daughter and you just tell them everything they should do and they don't listen to one thing you have to say. Why? Because it is their process. Y'all ain't gonna say nothing. Y'all still saying to yourself, I'm gonna fix this. And all you do is make it worse. 
until God changes the heart of the individual, they're going to stay on a certain course because that's all they can see. But when you allow God to start operating in your life, God will bring you to a place where you finally understand that God's plan is the best plan for your life. Somebody said to me, if I would have only known when I was younger that God was going to be this good to me, that God was going to bless me like this, if I was obedient to his word, if I would have known that when I was in my youth, do you think I would have just almost destroyed my life? But God let you go through that process. Not because he didn't love you. But sometimes, you have to come to a place where you see yourself for who you really are. And I'm going to tell you something from my perspective. I've seen myself and didn't even like myself. Amen. Now y'all don't have to confess that. I didn't ask you to raise your hand. I didn't ask you to say amen. I'm just talking about me. And God's plan, when I recognize, Lord, I'm so glad that you didn't leave me out there by myself. Because if you let me out there, the enemy would have destroyed me. The enemy would have cut me off. The enemy would have laid my house to waste. But Lord, because of you, you brought me in. And I look over my life now. And I see what you gave me. I see how you preserved me. I see how you blessed me. I see how you allowed your blessings to come on me. And overtake me in a way. And all I can say today is, Lord, Lord, I praise you because you've been better than good to me at your plan. Your plan, Jesus, without a shadow of a doubt, was the best plan for my life. I didn't always like it. I didn't always agree with it. Now, I was raised in the house with a pastor. My dad, Bishop Mickens, taught us and he didn't waver and sway and he wasn't living a double life and I learned how to respect the things of God but it didn't save me from going through my process and after the Lord had to whip up on me yes because he said I chasten those whom I love some of us have caused ourselves some situations where God has been merciful, but he's chastised us along the way to bring us back in line because we needed correction. If I love you, I'm going to chasten you. If I love you, I'm going to deal with you as my sons and my daughters. If I love you when you go out there, I'm going to allow you to go only but so far. But I'm going to let you know that I'm God. Aren't y'all glad he loves you like that? He's always sending a word. Sometimes we just don't want to receive it. He's always sending a way for you to come to him. Sometimes you just keep saying, not yet, Lord. And you just push him to the side. But I'm saying today is the acceptable day right now. Is the acceptable hour. This is the time to receive God as your Lord, as your King, and as your Savior. You may have been fighting. You may have been resisting. But I come to tell you God's plan is the best plan for your life. Come on, clap your hands, step to your feet, and give God a praise at this time. If you believe it, come on and stand to your feet and give Him some glory at His time. Thank you, Jesus. Thank 
thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you. Saints, I want you to know that I love you. I look at your lives and I see what God is doing for you. And I believe God wants to do more. He wants you to surrender to him though. So that you can be used as an ambassador for the kingdom of God. It's not about this church. Not about this building. It's not about just the people here. God's body is so much larger than even the United States alone. It reaches over to continents and it touches lives everywhere and the body of Christ is everywhere. So never think that you're by yourself. But ask God to reach out, Lord, and save and help us to be connected to the body and help us to be compassionate for those around us. And help us to share the gospel of Jesus Christ because it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believe. To the Jew first and also to the Greek. And as many as the Lord our God shall call.